Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be looking at our plants which we have fed liquid fertilizers and fish flakes and seeing how much they've grown and reapplying these fertilizers to them and also talking about our new panel that we have outside and some other things about all the plants that we are growing together. So let's start the video. So guys, you might be able to see in the background there, you actually can't because the camera's so bright. But anyway, last night I went out and I got a polycarbonate sheet. I did say in yesterday's video that I was gonna do it because it's, you can't tell, but it's been raining the whole night and it's gonna continue raining for the next couple of days. So I really needed something to protect the plants um, from the rain, obviously, because our, you know, our cardboard sheets is, it's finished because obviously when cardboard gets wet constantly it just disintegrates so we have that sheet now which will also allow sunlight in but also protect the plants from water but let me tell you guys about the actual struggle that i went through to get that sheet from the home depot to my house so as i said in yesterday's video i was planning on getting one of the circular the corrugated polycarbonate panels simply because i'm used to them and i've seen them before and you know i just literally just have used them before so why not they also had two other types a greca one or greca which is like kind of square and then there's a five rib which is also square but it's much bigger which is kind of more industrial and also quite expensive so obviously i wasn't going to go and get that one so i went up to the shops i was going to buy the 4.2 meter long polycarbonate sheet so yeah i'd been there before i'd seen the sheets and i was ready to go get them so I went there in my car, you know, as I've said many times, the Home Depot is really not far away. So I went there, walked in, everything's fine, and I went to the polycarbonate sheeting section. And this is where things started to get a little bit annoying because I was looking for the 4.2 meter sheets, which they said they had online, but obviously they didn't have them. They didn't even have the 3.6 meter sheets. They obviously had run out of all the different sizes um, well, the bigger size is the ones that were more than more than three meters. So yeah, all of those were sold out and you had to like special order them. So firstly, I'm annoyed because why would you say on your website that they are available if they're actually not and you have to firstly special order them? So that was, you know, obviously quite annoying. And obviously I went there and I'm looking around for the corrugated ones and I'm like, okay, well, they have these Greco ones, you know, just as in the back of my head. And they obviously, they do not have the 3.6 meter sheets and the corrugated polycarbs and they didn't have three meters in them either. So I'm like, I do not want to get the square ones, the, the greater ones, because I've obviously never used them before, but they're the ones which they had in the longest length. So I was kind of stressing like, I need to get this tonight because it's going to rain tonight. And I had no idea, you know, how well the greater sheets work and I had no other knowledge about them other than the fact that they have the same light transmission as the corrugated ones and that they just use less purlins if you were building a structure for them, which obviously I'm not. So I had no idea what to do. Also, I went to the corrugated ones because they're a little bit wider than the Greco ones, but they're only wider by four centimeters. So obviously it's not a big deal, but it is just something else which really guided me in thinking that I wanted to get the corrugated ones. So I went to the lady and I asked her all this information and I'm now stressing because I have to basically settle on the, the Greca polycarbonate sheets. So that's what we have outside. That's obviously what I brought in yesterday. And you know, this was all okay. You know, I, I kind of played it off. I played it cool. I got the sheet. I took it and you know, obviously I purchased it. This thing's 3.6 meters. So I'm carrying it. It's very light. So I'm carrying it under my arm. But you know, you have to walk very slowly because the, the amount of like resistance when you turn it, you know, and it hits the wind was insane. So I'm trying to not hit people. I'm trying to go through the narrow, you know, turns that they have everywhere because of, you know, all the restrictions and the social distancing stuff. So, and I'm trying to not hit these things and not hit people. And it just, you know, started to get very, very annoying. But anyway, got outside, turned around, you know, walked around the whole building to get to my car. And I thought that I thought that my polycarbonate sheet. So I thought that my polycarbonate sheet 
would obviously fit in my car and like the most stereotypical thing ever as always it did not fit into the car it was about i would say like 40 or so centimeters too long and uh, this was very annoying because now I, I had to strap it onto the roof racks which is fine it's just very annoying because it is obviously such a long panel and any kind of wind hitting it would cause you know a much greater movement in this panel so obviously i had to strap it down pretty well and yeah, you know, it was <laughs> uh, just so, it's just one of the dumbest feelings ever, strapping down this light and thin material to your roof that you know is going to go flying regardless of whatever you do. But the whole reason why I decided to actually just go ahead and do it is because of how close I live to the Home Depot. So I put, I first put the polycarbonate into the car because I wanted to just stay in the car so it didn't fly around if I put it in the floor and I took out the ratchets and all the straps. So then after I took those out and untangled them, I put them on the roof, I put the polycarbonate on the roof and I put these buckles on top of the polycarbonate so they had some weight in it so it wouldn't fly around everywhere. Then you know I just tied it down like normal, I tied it sideways, if this is the panel, I tied it across in the front and the back and then I tied it from the front to the middle and then from the back to the middle um, with the ratchets. And I had like a bungee, a bungee cord which I attached to the front rope and I put that bungee cord from that rope at the front into the grill of my car to, you know, keep the nose of the polycarbonate sheet down so that, you know, obviously when the wind hits it, it would hit it in the front and get pushed down instead of getting caught at the bottom and causing the whole panel to fly up. So that's what I did. And obviously people walking past and everyone's just staring, wondering what the hell is this guy going to do here? And obviously one of the, 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 the delivery ladies who drives their cars for the Home Depot, you know, and delivers things, she comes and obviously you know she she's obviously used to delivering these kind of things so she drives past and she looks and she just laughs in the car and drives off and i'm thinking to myself oh i look like such an idiot how the hell is this gonna work anyway i'm driving home i'm going like five to ten kilometers per hour because anything more than that causes the sheet to blow up and guys i was so nervous i was literally shaking you know because obviously i live in south africa there is basically no rules. You can do whatever you want. You could literally drive in a car that has only three wheels and still continue driving. You could do whatever you want. So obviously being in a first world country where there are laws and regulations and things that, you know, obviously have to be followed, which there should be in every country. I was very nervous that this panel would, you know, rise up too high or that it might fly off my car and hit someone or something like this. I was so nervous. So let me just play you guys this clip. Guys, this is one of the most nerve-wracking things I've ever done in my life. We have the polycarbonate roof on top of my car's roof. And I'm driving home. You see, I have, the, I have the bungee cord there at the front to keep it down. Which obviously really helps, but yo, I'm so nervous. Anyway, I'm nearly home. You see, I did tell you guys I live very close to um, the Home Depot, so it's like... It's really not far at all, but just this drive is taking me like probably 10 minutes. So yeah. So as you guys can see, obviously the wind was still getting underneath the polycarbonate and making it fly up. So this bungee cord at the front was extending, you know, it's only about 30 centimeter cord, but this thing was stretching to two meters and I was so stressed that it was gonna snap and this thing was gonna fly off and hit someone. Yo, this is one of the most stressful feelings I've ever had in my life. I was literally shaking like this on the way home, going 10 kilometers per hour. Oh, it was insane. But you, luckily, guys, I got home perfectly fine. Everything was happy. I recorded that video when I was basically on my street. So yeah, got home. Everything was fine. Thank God. So I just took everything off. I put it outside. I just wiped it down because... You know, you need to wipe your polycarbonates down because they get some dust builds up on it. So you just need to make sure that it's nice and clear. Just cleaned it and then put on top of those, the bins, as you can see, and I put three milk bottles on each side just to keep it down, you know, obviously just to prevent the wind from blowing it. Obviously, if there's a very big wind, it's, it's not going to change anything. That thing's going to go flying. So yeah, that's, that's the current situation. That's the current, you know, Ratchet 101 setup that we have for our plants outside. You know, polycarbonate sheet on top of two rubbish bins yeah but you know un until i can afford to actually make benches and some kind of a roof structure this is what we want to have so yeah anyway that's the story of our polycarbonates as i said we got the graker ones which is the square ones it's not what i really wanted but it is what it is and anyway that's that for that story i hope you guys enjoyed listening to that 
Anyway, let's now look at our three plants. We have Drostra regia, we have Drostra alae, and Drostra rotundifolia. So we're gonna see how these guys are doing because as I said, we've been fertilizing these guys about every single week now. And let's check up on how they're doing. And a couple of people have actually asked me about our liquid fertilizer here. They've asked me what brand it is, you know, obviously where can they get it? This is a seaweed extract. It is obviously natural because of the seaweeds and it is very high in nitrogen. So you guys can also see a video on this. We've done it before on the channel where I actually talk more about the fertilizers. But if you guys do wanna go ahead and purchase some of this liquid fertilizer, I'll put a link in the description below so that you guys can just go into Amazon and just order some for yourselves. Obviously in Australia, they have different brands, but the brands that you wanna get if you're living in the USA is Maxi, which is really recommended for all the plants. And here in Australia, this is called Sea Soul or Power, it's Power Feed. So that's what it is here. And I'm sorry to you guys in the UK, I've never grown plants in the UK. I don't know what to get, but I will give you guys the link for the Maxi on Amazon. So basically everyone around the world can just use that link. So let me just turn around the camera and talk a little bit more about the plants. Okay guys, so I actually got a comment from a couple people asking me about the PPM of this uh, solution of our fertilizer and it's reading 408 parts per million. So obviously the seaweed solution is reading 408, 420 right now, 426. So it's around 400, which is quite a lot more than our base rate. Our base water level is at 20 PPM. So yeah, you guys can see that we're currently at around 400, 430. So yeah, that's really a guide for you guys, I guess. And obviously if you guys want a TDS meter like this, I will also have that down in the description below so that you can obviously check your water levels and you can also check your fertilizers so that you obviously know your water levels if it's good for your plants and obviously you'll know if your fertilizer is strong enough or weak enough for your plants. So we will first start off with our Adelaide over here. Our Adelaide looks super, super good as you can tell. It's getting quite big and we fed it a fish flake last time. So since then, this leaf over here has opened up and there is one now developing right there at the back, which is gonna be nice and big as well. Bigger than this guy because we're fertilizing it so much. So all I'm gonna do is we're gonna put another fish flake onto this guy over here and do a 10 minute time lapse, which will be 30 seconds for you guys and see if the, if the plant curls around the fish flake at all. So let me do that real quick. So we've got a nice big sized fish flake over here, guys. And I'm just gonna stimulate the leaf a little bit so that we you know, have a possibility of see, seeing a little bit more movement in the sky. So there we go guys, I'll give you guys 10 minutes and I'll be back then. So there we go guys, as you can see our plant has eaten this fish flake. There hasn't been much movement simply because it is so young and also because the fish flake doesn't move and stimulate the traps. Next up, we have our Drosera regis. We have two of them and you can very easily see them within their very dark green circles. I actually spoke about why these dark circles exist on Sunday's video. So right down here is our healthy, healthier Drosera regi. I'm not gonna get out the magnifying glass because um, it hasn't changed much since, yes, since Sunday's video, but you can see the developing bud right there in the center of the screen. So this plant is growing really, really well. But this guy over here looks like he isn't too happy. I actually think that this plant is dying. So the only thing that we can do is really try and ensure that I get the fertilizer right to their roots. So what I will do is just move the soil out the way a little bit and make sure that I put some droplets right on the roots. So let me just first fertilize this guy over here. Let me fix the camera for you guys. So here is a much better view of our Drosera regi, the very healthy and happy one with the developing buds. So let's give this, oh, sorry guys. So let's give this guy some fertilizer. And that's a good amount for him. And what we're gonna do here is actually try fertilize this regi and I'm gonna move its roots up, I mean, move the soil out the way so I can access its roots much easier and hopefully you guys will be able to see this. So you can see that long stem there. 
That is its root, its tap root, obviously. So I'm gonna put this fertilizer right on that tap root. And all we can do is hope and pray that some fertilizer helps this little guy out because obviously he is a you know almost about dead because it hasn't gained any gotten any food and used all of his energy on growing and for some reason hasn't used any of the fertilizer that we've been giving it so yeah hopefully this does help this guy out a little bit and lastly we have our drosera rotundifolia over here this is the traps that we've been feeding with fish flakes and neither are traps that we have been feeding with liquid fertilizer. So obviously they are still about the same size. There has not been much growth or any growth at all really since we last looked at them. I think this guy probably has opened up this new trap here. Obviously this one's newest trap is still eating the previous fish flakes. So we can't look at the trap sizes really. And the only other trap that is developing it's still not open, whereas this one's newest trap right here is open. So as I said previously, this guy is growing quicker than this guy over here. As you can see, this trap is completely open and developed where this one is still developing. But obviously these guys are both growing really well and are actually now the biggest traps in the whole pot. But before we fertilize these guys, there are two things here that we need to actually address and fix. And that is this little plant here. And this one over here as you can see their roots are obviously not going into the soil so this is causing this plant over here to start dying off and we don't want that to happen so all that i'm going to do is i'm going to just gently pull them out of the soil make a small little hole and put them into the soil and i'll just do a quick time lapse of that for you guys So as you guys can see, we have now moved these guys and repotted them a little bit, just covered their roots. Now obviously these root disturbances can kill them, but it's either I move them and you know give them a chance to survive, or we just leave them as they are and then they'll naturally die anyway because their roots can't actually get into the soil. So it's one of those situations. So what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna feed one droplet of liquid to this guy and one fish flake over here. And the reason for this is because there is only one open trap over here. So if we feed more than one trap on this plant, it means that this plant will be get, getting more fertilizer, which means that obviously this one will do much better than this one. So just trying to control the experiments a little bit, you're only gonna feed one trap on each plant, even though we can already see that this guy can catch more insects and has more available traps. So there are the fish flakes done for the plants on the right. Now let's just put a, one droplet of liquid fertilizer on the plant on the left. So we have an issue. Our little needle that we've been using is no longer working and I don't know why. So it was working the last time I used it. But I'll just use the tip of the syringe like this and get a droplet on. And there we go, we have quite a big droplet actually on this plant. So let's try this trap over here. Yeah, as you guys can see, it's so much more difficult now that we don't have a needle, but there is a little bit of fertilizer on that trap right over there. So I will now do a 10 minute time lapse to see if these traps close at all for you guys. And that'll be about 30 seconds for you guys again. So I'll see you guys after that. And there we go guys, I didn't see any movement on these guys at all as usual because obviously as I said before, obviously the fish flakes and the liquid doesn't move so it doesn't stimulate the traps to actually close. So that is it for today's video guys. If you found any new information or something interesting, please remember to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well because obviously if you've watched this whole video, you'd enjoy all the other videos that we make every single week. Also, don't forget about our seed giveaway that is running from Wednesday the 9th, from today, Wednesday the 10th, to next week, Wednesday the 17th. 
And if you want more information, make sure that you check out yesterday's video where we actually talk about how to enter the seed giveaway. So I'll see you guys in tomorrow's episode.